Have you ever wondered how your view of things in your life, just simple objects, can impact how happy you are or give you a new perspective? That's what we'll talk about today. I abhor the idea of a perfect world. It would bore me to tears. Shelby Foote. Today, we're going to continue our talk about culture and happiness around the world. We're going to use websites, resources, and a book called Happiness, Found in Translation, A Glossary of Joy from Around the World by Tim Lomas. I use his book because he has some interesting words in there. But even when you look around the internet, you'll find all sorts of ways that people consider happiness or think about happiness and joy in a different way. Today, we'll talk about how things can make us happy or give us a new appreciation. First of all, we'll talk about the concept that there is a lot of joy in imperfection, about the differences of things in the world. I talked about how we have snow here and how my friend loves to go out and take pictures of snowflakes. And what's interesting about it is they're all so different. And if you listen to scientists, they'll say that every one of them is different. It's amazing how there can be so many different snowflakes. Back to my show notes, I put a link to a website that shows you all the different snowflakes they found through photography. It's amazing how something that can form, even in a process, can be so different and how we can enjoy those differences. And there's this amazing quote that comes from a fellow named Steve Maraboli. And it's from a piece called Perfectly Imperfect, where he talks about how snowflakes all take this different journey, all go these different directions, all have these different experiences, end up entirely different, but yet end up in the same place. And he says, quote, I find parallels in nature to be a beautiful reflection of grand orchestration. One of these parallels is of the snowflakes and us. We, too, are headed in the same direction. We are being driven by a universal force to the same direction. We are all individuals taking different journeys. And along our journey, we sometimes bump into each other. We cross paths. We become altered. We take different forms. But at all times, we too are 100% perfectly imperfect. And that's an amazing way to tie up this idea of objects being imperfect and the beauty in them with the beauty in us also being imperfect. Wonderful to just look at snowflakes or anything, like a tree. You get this tree and it's an ash tree and that's an ash tree and they're both the same, but this one's bent and this one has better leaves or this one's hanging over a river and it looks a little bit different than the other. There's so much joy, I think, in taking a look at how the same thing is always different. We're all people, we're all different. Trees are all different. Snowflakes are all different. And those differences make things exciting. In Japan, there's this concept of wabi-sabi. And this always cracks me up because I watch Project Runway. And this one woman made an output. And it wasn't correct. And it wasn't finished. And it had a lot of problems with it. And when she got criticism for it, she goes, oh, well, wabi-sabi. And so when I looked it up, it just means that there's something about embracing the imperfection of things. I don't think... It's an excuse to be sloppy or to not finish your outfit or to basically wreck something without fixing it. It's really meant about that imperfection of the cherry blossoms that blow away, the snowflakes that are each so different, or taking a look at all the differences in leaves. You ever take a deep look at leaves when you go on a walk in the forest? What you'll find is they're green, but they're not all the same green. This one's a little bit olive green. This one's bright lime green. This one's more of a grass green. And those differences really make everything exciting to us. And Wabi Sabi is more about that imperfection and beauty. It's about how these differences, these imperfections, really make the world deep, interesting, and exciting. I like that concept. It's another word that isn't easily translated into English because there's no word that's like that, but it loosely translates into the exception of imperfection. And that's a good life lesson. We should accept our own imperfections, but we also can enjoy the imperfections of the world around us. And in the book by Tim Lomas, he was saying, isn't it nice too that when we 
let go of perfection. In ourselves, we basically give up on beating ourselves up for being imperfect. Or if we had this concept of beauty that maybe we had when we were in our 20s, I will be beautiful like this, or how you saw yourself in the mirror. But you know what? We all age, we all change, we get a scar here and there. That scar is part of our beauty because we got it through a process. I have a funny dish that I make and it is so difficult and it uses so many knives that I have a scar in my hand for every time I've made it. I've only made it three times. I could fret about my imperfection now. I could talk about the scars I have. I could talk about the things that aren't perfect with me or I could take them up. I could look at my house. I could look at the nature around me or my town and fret about all the things that aren't quite perfect. Or I could just enjoy the imperfection in the world around me. And I think that's what this is about. It's really meant to share with us this idea of things being rough or more simple than they should be. Or maybe they were inexpensive when they could have been expensive and they're not perfect because of the materials we used. But still, there's beauty in that imperfection. They even talk about wabi-sabi when it comes to old things, like a favorite jacket you have that is beat up and torn and something that your spouse tells you you should throw out because it just looks ratty. But you know what? Maybe it's your favorite jacket. Maybe you had amazing world adventures in that jacket or you met your spouse in that jacket and it has memories and meaning to you. And it's wonderful, even as it's ripped up faded in places, or finding that appreciation of it. Someone pointed out that wabi-sabi is the antithesis of this factory world we live in. When I buy a cell phone or I buy a computer, I want it to be perfect according to specs, exactly as it's supposed to come off the factory floor. But there's no wabi-sabi in that. There's no chance of adventure. And when you take a look at actual paintings that people will buy compared to prints that art stores might sell. The excitement in the art itself is the fact that it's imperfect, it's different, the tree's a little bit different, and if that person were to paint that same scene again, it would never be exactly the same. I have a painting in my house that was done by a relative of mine and given to my grandmother as a gift. It's one of my favorite things that I own. Because it's so deep and it's so amazing. And you know what? It's cracking here and there. The frame is pretty old. The canvas is getting old. But you know what? In my eyes, this gets more beautiful every year because it's so unique. It's so different that I can appreciate all the different things about it. I remember too back when synthesizers became a big thing in the 80s and people started ditching pianos and violins and other musical instruments to play things on the synthesizer, primarily because it was easy to pack and you would have access to every instrument on the planet practically through this computer device. But they found out that people don't like synthesizer music. And what turned out is that the pitch was too perfect. Guitars have their own sound because they're not perfect. Violins have their own sounds because they're not perfect. And so what programmers started doing in order to make people like synthesizers better, is they started putting imperfections in the sound. Not mistakes in the notes or the chords, but just so that the sound isn't this perfect, simulated, AI-driven guitar. Sounds like a real guitar. And the only way you get there is through imperfection. My friend and I, we appreciate old barns. (laughs) Ones that are falling over, had better days, and they're just fun to drive around and look at. Same thing repaired art, broken vases that have been glued back together. There always is that thing that makes them better, puts them back together. And when you talk about repairing something, there's another Japanese word that's kintsuji, which is the art of repairing broken things. In our culture, particularly in the United States, we are just used to throwing out everything that gets broken. And it wasn't that way when I was a kid, but now everything comes from a mass factory. And so if I break a plate, I'm not gluing it back together. I'm going to throw it out. I'm going to get another plate. But there is something with gluing something back together, putting it back together so it actually works. I remember the first mug I ever bought, and it was at this factory outlet for broken China, essentially. It was a ceramics factory. 
And it made all sorts of things. And when anything was imperfect, that's where they sold it in the store. And I ended up getting this mug. I probably was just, you know, under 10 years old. I still have that mug. It's one of the very few things I have from my childhood. I loved it so much. I picked it out myself. And the first comment that came out of someone's mouth is, why did you pick this? It has a big chip on it. You know what? I did pick it out. And I do love that mug. And it isn't perfect. And I do love it. But that mug to me was just the thing I absolutely wanted. And after that imperfection, there's even something in the Norwegian language called etupukluk skarp. Oof, sorry if I made that a mess. But it's called after wisdom. And the idea is that this is the kind of thing that you learn from after you've made a mistake. And so it's that same concept of imperfection. Not so much in an object, but in you. You've learned a valuable lesson. Something went horribly wrong. And now you get to learn from it. And you get to be better for it in the future. So it's really great when you can even take imperfection in yourself and make it something valuable. There was a situation where I worked for this company and someone high up in the company and luckily well-loved by the owner of the company who made a bet on a football game for a free implementation of our software. I think it might have been like a million dollar bet. It was expensive. He was confident that we was going to win. And guess what? He lost the bet. He was afraid he was going to get fired. And what she replied, which is an old famous line, are you kidding? You just got a million dollar education. It was a really great way of looking at something that was a lesson and after wisdom so that he learned something valuable that he'll never do again for any company or any time. The next concept of a thing has to do with Epicureanism. And that's the philosophy, they say around 300 BC, of the ancient Greeks. And it was really a challenge to Plato because Plato really pushed to have a simple, plain life. And that's where pleasure came from. And it was basically an opposite, that there is pleasure to be found in things, good food, enjoyment of items. And it went directly against what Plato was saying. And lately, particularly in the American culture, it has been turned into a word that means more hedonism, enjoying the pleasures of life, drink and food. I think that that's not where the word originally meant, but that you can take enjoyment out of a good meal, out of a tasteful drink, out of a beautiful piece of art, that there's nothing wrong with enjoying a particular item as it doesn't turn our life into a hedonistic mess. But that's what I think the real Epicureanism is about, at least historically. And even in the concept of France, there's bon vivant, which is about a person who just loves life, loves being around people, enjoying great food and drink. And I think it has that same concept. Sometimes we take it too far in our modern culture and turn something into worshiping or enjoying an object too much. But I think there's that fine point where we can enjoy things around us without turning it into a bad place. And that goes into joie de vie. Here's a word I think I actually said correctly, but that's the joy of living, you know, taking on life and embracing it and enjoying it for all the things that it has to offer. And again, nothing bad. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the things around us. It really gives us a chance to appreciate the people, the conversations, everything that we can find around us and really being that complete human being that enjoys their surroundings and the things around them. So just to give you an example, someone started snowblowing outside and snowblowers are really loud and any podcaster of any worth would stop recording right at this very minute because it's noisy. It could come out on the audio. But you know what? Wabi sabi. Let's just enjoy the imperfection of the snowblower outside. Okay, that might even be a bridge too far for me. Snowblowing is pretty obnoxious. My challenge to you is look around at the things that you see. Can you find beauty in their imperfection? Or can you find ways of appreciating the imperfection in yourself? Also spend time thinking about the quality things in your life. And think about how good friends, good food, and good drinks 
whether it's wine or coffee, adds to your life. Don't make things an item of worship, but instead appreciate them with all their flaws and all their perfection. And now our fun entertainment advice comes from Anne with an E. This is broken. I think broken things have such a sad beauty. After years of stories and triumph and tragedy infused into them, they can be much more romantical than new things that haven't lived at all. (laughs) See, she gets it. She sees that things that are flawed, whether they be objects or people, tell a story, show their history, and have something to teach us. And Anne with an E was a fun show to watch. If you can understand a girl who had a lot of drama happen to her and was not perfect, but also saw amazing things that other people couldn't see. All right, everyone, have a great week. I hope you enjoy the things around you, the people around you, and all the imperfections that exist in the world.